watching Caffeine and Pixie Dust. Have a wonderful day. Hello and welcome back to Caffeine and Pixie Dust. So today is all about the food, the Disney food. Um, in this video I'm going to be focusing entirely on the food that we ate at Disneyland Paris recently. It's kind of like a Disney food diary I guess, what we ate at Disney, because I thought if you are planning your practically perfect Disneyland Paris holiday then you might be starting to look at restaurants and cafes that you might like to try, looking online menus and that type of stuff, and I thought that this video might help sort of provide a bit of a guide so that you can actually start to think which restaurants would be best for you and your part. Party. So what I'm going to do in this video is when we were at Disneyland Paris I took some footage of some of the restaurants we ate at but I also took photos of everything I ate before I started eating it I might add so that you can actually see what the food looks like on the plate because sometimes when you're looking at menus be them on, be they online or actually at the table sometimes it's kind of hard to visualize what the food's going to look like on the plate so I thought it would be useful for you to actually be able to sort of maybe look at the menus and then look at the photos or the clips I'm going to insert and work out whether that might be something you'd like to try. Now I didn't only take photos of my food, I also took photos of my family's food and they were ever so patient, they waited until I <laughs> took a quick picture because I wanted to make sure that it was a kind of good overview of what you might be able to choose when you're at these restaurants. And where I can I will insert a little caption box which will actually say what the dish is um, so that you can kind of look at the menu, look at the picture and work out, yeah, if that's what you want. So a little bit of a trip overview, um, in case you haven't seen any of our trip vlogs or the trip report I did, which I will of course link below. Um, we stayed at the Newport Bay um, at Compass Club level, which was amazing. And as part of Compass Club, you get a full cooked breakfast buffet every morning and also afternoon tea each day, both of which we definitely made the most of. With regards to dining plans, um, we do tend to go for a dining plan and we do try to go for premium dining as well because we really like to make the most of kind of character meats um, with character dining and all that type of stuff and trying some of the really yummy restaurants as well. Um, so yes, this time we went for half board premium. If you've watched any of my previous videos with regards to dining plans, you'll know that we did previously try full board dining um, at premium level. Now, don't get me wrong, the food was amazing. It was absolutely delicious, but my goodness, there was so much of it. Um, and the thing is, because we'd chosen lots and lots of character dining, we didn't have as much in time in the park kind of thing because if you think if you go to somewhere like Inventions for lunch or dinner, it might take around two hours. So that really eats <laughs> excuse the pun, into your actual time in the park because you're kind of sitting down and making the most of it as well you should because you know those meals aren't cheap but if you want to then dash around and do all the rides you're losing a bit of time. And we also found a little bit like we were full all the time <laughs> so as a result I don't feel that we really appreciated the food maybe as much as we could have. So for us this time we went for half board premium and it was perfect because between the um, full cooked breakfast, the afternoon tea um, and then the meal in the evening and of course our snack packs, we were absolutely fine because I made up snack packs for days. Again, I did a, like a vlogging planning our Disney trip video um, in which I show you all the stuff I put in our snack packs, all labelled and everything. I got a bit into my snack packs, I'm not going to lie. Um, they were really handy because the way we'd use those is we would pack up little, little breakfast ones um, and then when we hit the parks for extra magic time, take them with us, throw them in the rucksack and then when we were waiting for something like Princess Pavilion with a massive queue, we could actually sit and have breakfast and this was brilliant because it meant that not only were we sort of feeding those empty tummies and making sure people didn't get a bit hangry, um, but we were also kind of making use of dead time because we would have just been sat there otherwise. So snack packs for the win, definitely, because between that and then the, the meal and the afternoon tea and the big breakfast, we were just absolutely fine. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to insert some footage of the breakfast from Compass Club because although I have popped this in a previous video, I think it was my Compass Club review, this is the food video, so you've got to see the food. Um, the breakfast was lovely, there was absolutely anything you wanted for breakfast, I had about 
two, maybe three plates each time. Um, I had like rye bread with smoked salmon, cream cheese, and then I'd have pancakes with bacon and maple syrup or waffles. And it was lovely because we could all just go up and down as many times we wanted and get what we wanted. The atmosphere was really relaxed. The staff were really friendly. And yeah, I would definitely recommend sort of, if you can, um, trying to have a hotel breakfast at some point because they are really, really yummy. So here is the footage now. So on to the restaurants. Now on our first night when we actually arrived at Disneyland Paris we were staying off site for our first night but we do tend to like to go into the village for dinner so that we feel that we're kickstarting our Disney holiday uh, from the get-go and the first place that we ate at was King Ludwig's in the village. Now if you don't know this is actually tucked away, it really is kind of tucked away if you're walking down through the village towards the um, Disneyland Hotel it's going to be on your left and there is like a sign outside so you'll be able to see it. The decor here is amazing. It's really themed so beautifully. It's really kind of very different from anything else in the village. You walk in and you really feel like you've been transported to a very, very different place. Um, I have got some footage that I'm gonna pop in in just a moment so you can have a look at what I mean. Um, now with regards to the menu, I feel like there's a bit more variety to the menu here at King Ludwig's um, because it isn't just the kind of standard cheeseburger, chips, you know, sausages, chicken nuggets, that type of stuff. There is quite a lot of choice, especially with regards to the adult menu. There's a lot of different things you can choose from. They do lots of meal deals. They do lots of different beers, which I didn't try, but they're meant to be fantastic. Um, but we specifically went in there for something a little bit random, which is something called Flammenkuchen or Flammenkuchen. Now, this is something my husband had tried um, before and had really, really liked. And I spotted on the online menu that they actually do it at King Ludwig. So we went there specifically to try it. And it was really, really nice. For those of you who haven't had it, you might want to Google it, but it's kind of like a pizza, but on very, very thin dough, almost like phyllo pastry. And it's really, really yummy. Um, so yes, we went for that. Um, and then with regards to the children's choices, there's a set menu for $12.99. Um, and that's the kind of chicken nuggets, pasta, sausage and chips, cheeseburger, that type of stuff. They then also get a choice of dessert and also a drink. Um, now, moving on to drinks, obviously not for children, for adults. They do really nice cocktails as well. And I personally can recommend the mojitos at uh, King Ludwig's because it is the best mojito I have ever had. And I love me a mojito. So if you're going, do give it a try. So just to give you an overview of the price, we had a family of four, uh, we had two children's meals, adults had two main courses, uh, pudding each, a um, couple of extra soft drinks, and I think it was one or two cocktails, and that came to approximately 100 euros, which might be like, whoa, that's quite a lot of money, you know, when you're thinking about UK restaurants and things like that, but you are at Disneyland Paris. And what I would say is that we ate at Annette's, I think on the trip previously, and we had quite a basic meal there. It was lovely. I love the veggie burgers there. I will always have that. Um, but the bill was like 130 euros. And when we walked away, we were kind of like, we didn't get that much <laughs> for that money. 
I don't know, it didn't quite equate for us anyway. So to go to King Ludwig's to have this really relaxed meal, for it to be a really immersive and chilled experience with food that was a little bit different and there were lots of things to try, we thought it was a good, a good choice anyway. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to insert a little bit of video of the actual decor and also some pictures of the food and the mojito that we had at King Ludwig's. So here you go. So there you go, that's the pictures of the food we had at King Ludwig's. Um, would I eat there again? Yes, I really, really enjoyed it. We really enjoyed it. Uh, the food was yummy, as I said, at the end of a long day of traveling, it was a really nice chilled restaurant to go to. But my pro tip, tip of the day, please book. <laughs> we didn't book, we kind of just went, oh yeah, yeah, let's go in here. After I'd seen that they had the Flammenkuchen, I thought we were gonna go, but we didn't book and we had to wait maybe half an hour maybe 40 minutes and there was quite a long queue we did get seated it was absolutely fine but if we'd booked the queue was this big <laughs> we could have just walked straight in so definitely book if you're thinking of trying there so the next place we ate at the next day um after our uh, no this was yes this was sorry on our first full day in the park um we went to fuento del oros in frontierland i hope i'm saying that right fuento del oros i think it means source of the gold if you look up the translation think anyway so yes this is in Frontierland it is opposite Big Thunder Mountain if you're trying to track it down um, to give you an idea of the prices this is sort of like a counter service place um, and the menus are between $12.99 and $13.99 for the adult choices and the kids meals are $8.99 so pretty reasonable um, for the adults you can have loaded fries with salad and a drink and then for the $13.99 you can have the beef enchilada the Mexican rice salad yogurt or churros <laughs> and a drink um i went for one with churros it was lovely and then for the kids meals you can have a chicken sandwich with either cherry tomato with cherry tomatoes and like apple and water and then you can either have the sausages with salad and rice from our spray apple puree <laughs> and an ice cream i think anyway you can have a look at the menus online. I have written it down, but I don't want to constantly be reading. Um, so yeah, the meals there were really, really nice. I also got into peach iced tea, which I really, really like in a big way now. So I'm going to drop in the pictures here. Um, there's only a couple of this one. So as I said, I had the beef enchiladas with the um, Mexican rice I had, and then the churros, which I don't think were in the picture, but believe you me, they were nice. And I also had a peach iced tea. So here are the pictures now. So yes, I'm afraid I didn't have too many pictures of our food there because it was a bit of a quick stop for our lunch, but we really, really enjoyed it and we would definitely eat there again. I think the theming is really cool. Um, it fits in really well with Frontierland. It's nice and fresh and it's nice and cool to sit down and just relax for a bit. And also since last year, they've themed it really closely um, with cocoa. So there's lots of kind of flowers and, you know, Day of the Dead style decor, and you've got um, great big hangings and things and a mural. So it's a really, really really nice place to just go and sort of take your feet take you know sit down for a moment relax and enjoy some food before dashing off onto your next adventure at Disneyland Paris so the next meal we had was inventions I heart inventions I love it there I love it there um, for those of you who aren't sure inventions is character dining it's based in the Disneyland Hotel to actually find inventions you from memory ooh, you go in past reception up the stairs um, to the right and down the corridor past gallery Mickey keep going and on your left is cafe Fantasia and on your right is um, inventions 
Now, Inventions is a really, really lovely experience. If you can squeeze in and if it's in your budget, you can do it as part of your premium dining, which we did. You can also do it as part of your other dining plans and top up um, any extra sort of with regards to the value. And you can also book it way in advance and pay for it up front. You can have lunch, dinner, and also brunch there. They all have characters. Um, the brunches will be themed, like Alice in Wonderland or Cinderella or something like that. Um, but the main lunches and dinners always have um, a selection of characters. I think it's between about four and six, I think. You tend to get quite a few of the classic crew and then also some sort of extras, like maybe Captain Hook and Smee, that type of thing. Um, it's a really, really lovely meal. We really enjoy it because it's relaxed. It's a great way to meet characters without any queuing. You just sit down, enjoy your meal and they come to you. But also the food is really, really good. There's a great selection. It's organized in different sections. So you've got kind of starter type food, main courses and desserts and sweets, lots of sweets. And you can kind of work your way down or you can just, you can start with a main if you want to or you can have lots of starchy food. It's what I tend to do because I like seafood. Um, so I have done a full sort of run through of all the different choices, um, which hopefully I didn't whiz through too quickly because I was quite hungry. So I'll insert that in a moment. Um, what I would say is it's great for children as well because it means they can go up and down and sort of pick out their favorite things. But also if you've got children that want to try different things or if you want to try different things, if you want to see what great big crab claws are like without having to kind of tear apart a crab and cook it at home, then this is your opportunity to try those things. So definitely would try inventions if you can. So I'm gonna insert some um, clips here. So there you go, that's the kind of typical spread you'd get at Inventions, I'd say. Um, as I said, I tend to go kind of mainly for seafood type food and kind of anti-pasty, anti-pasto type food because that's what I like. But there are plenty of different courses to choose from, plenty of different types of food, meats, pastas, roasts, all that kind of stuff. So you will find something that you like. What do we think of it? We love it. We love inventions and um, we will definitely always try to eat there at least once in a holiday if we can. What I would say is you do need to allow about two hours to really make the most of it, to make sure you meet all those characters and to take in the amazing view of Disneyland Paris laid in front of you because of course it's within the Disneyland Hotel which overlooks the park. And if for any reason you do feel like there are certain characters you haven't met who you've seen are wandering around, all you have to do is mention to the waiting staff that you just, you know, would really like to see Donald Duck. Donald Duck and they'll make sure that he'll come over to you. So there you go, that's invention. So for our next meal, we decided to eat somewhere entirely new because we'd never eaten there before. We'd heard great things about the Blue Lagoon before it became Captain Jack's, um, but we'd never quite got around to trying it. So I had a look online, we had a look at the menus. We do like seafood in our family, although it isn't just seafood. Please be assured there's lots of other stuff as well. Um, and we thought we would give it a try, especially this trip was all about princesses and pirates. So we were definitely immersed in that pirate world so we thought this would be a good fit for us. Now where it is, it is down um, actually next to the ride, the Pirates of the Caribbean ride, so right down in Adventureland and I always think if you can, if you've got a dining reservation somewhere kind of linked to the ride, it's always nice to jump on the ride first and then go and have your dining reservation because you feel like you are totally immersed in the world of that ride. Now talking about being immersed, this restaurant they have absolutely got it sussed. The immersion is amazing. So everything you experience at Pirates of the Caribbean ride is carried through to Captain Jack's and it's really, really cool. The sights, the sounds, the 
smells, even the temperature in the restaurant kind of mirror the ride. So you really do feel like you are still part of that buccaneering piratey adventure. Even as you walk through to the bathrooms, it's still kind of swing doors and stuff. It makes you feel like you're on a pirate ship. So yeah, it's really, really good. We enjoyed it, it's great fun. Now, as I mentioned, it isn't all seafood, and hopefully, um, if you have a look at the menu online, you'll see there's lots of different choices of different things you can have. What I would warn you is if you're gonna look at my photos in a minute and you don't like seafood, look away, <laughs> because there are some extreme close-ups of my king prawn main because it was yummy, and I do like seafood, as I've mentioned a few times in this video. So yes, maybe don't look if you're not too keen. Just to give you an idea, here we used our premium vouchers. We had uh, made our reservation 60 days before. Now, just to let you know, if you haven't got a dining plan, you can still make your um, dining reservations. Even if you're staying off site, even if you're just visiting for the day, you just need to wait 60 days before your actual holiday or your visit, and then you can phone up the dining line, which I will, of course, link in the show notes below with the number, and actually make your reservations. And it's always a good thing to make those reservations for these kind of quite popular restaurants because you don't want to be disappointed. Although you can always go and talk to your hotel concierge or city hall to see if they can squeeze you in or even the restaurant themselves. Anyway, sorry, I'm digressing. So yes, we used our premium vouchers and this meant that we had the freedom to pick anything from the menu, which was really, really good. The only extra money we spent was on these. <laughs> <laughs> these were um, the children's um, mocktails. They are kind of children's cocktails that they can choose and make up themselves with like peach nectar and mango puree and all that kind of stuff. These, these cups are really good fun. As you can see, they've got all the, um, sorry, little camera, zoom in, Pirates the Caribbean ride details on there including this little dog in the prison. Um, yeah, they're really cool. We paid extra for them. Not gonna lie, they've been used twice, but they're a nice memento of our piratey night at Captain Jack's. So yeah, definitely good fun. So just before I show you the photos of the food um, and a little bit of footage of the restaurant itself, just to let you know what I had. For my starter, I had marinated prawns with pear squash, papaya, and mint avocado salad. Lovely. Um, and then for my main course, I had grilled wild, king prawns, gosh, try saying that quickly, um, with shallots and salsa, which was yummy. And then for my pudding, I had bananas baked in rum and cane sugar and caramelized pecans. And it was as good as it sounds. It was absolutely yummy. So here are the pics now. There you go, um, you can see there's quite a lot of different choices you can have at Captain Jack's hopefully and from the photos you can see that it is a true piratey experience. It was really really good fun and we would definitely return there at the drop of a hat. We really enjoyed it, we will be going back. Um, it was a really enjoyable piratey night and it was wonderful to go on the ride, have our meal and then walk back through Adventureland with all the lights twinkling away, as you can see in one of the vlogs actually. And it really made it feel very, very special. The staff were really, really helpful, really, really friendly and we weren't rushed at all. So if you've got anyone who fancies the life of a pirate as a slight buccaneer, then I would definitely recommend Captain Jack's for a lovely meal. So moving on to the next one, this is another one that's kind of a little bit of a regular for us. Um, we're lucky enough to have been a couple of times, this was our third visit actually, which was a meal at Lauberge de Sandrion, which is the House of Cinderella. 
Now this is in the heart of Fantasyland, so just slightly down from the um, carousel I believe, um, and it's princess character dining meal, and it's lovely. It's really, really fine dining, um, it's a very, it's quite a grown up menu, um, but it's really enjoyable, and where else could you meet so many princesses in such a short amount of time, because you get to meet Cinderella, Susie and Perla, her two mice, um, and also a selection of other princesses. Um, I think on average it's about three other princesses maybe, um, without any queuing, because you don't have to go and queue for two hours at Princess Pavilion. You can just be enjoying their meal and they will come and greet you. And also the interaction's great because they don't just come up and kind of wave and that's it. They'll come backwards and forwards and come and see you again and come and have another chat and you can get lots and lots of photos and really make some magical memories. Now the decor um, is absolutely lovely in there. So imagine the ceiling painted with kind of blue sky and fluffy clouds. Every bit of surface that could have any sort of ornate carving has. There's beautiful tapestries hanging from the walls, chandeliers. It's a really, really special experience. And if you can, if you do have a little prince or princess who wants to feel incredibly regal for the day, you can of course do the princess for a day, prince or princess experience for a day, and then make a booking at L'Auberge de Sandrion to really make it a magical day. And that's what we've managed to do a couple of times and it's really, really perfect. So just to give you an idea of the characters, because I know this is my foodie video, but I'm gonna let you know about some of the characters you can meet there. As I've mentioned, you'll always meet Cinderella, Susie and Perla. Now you used to meet princes there as well, but they don't tend to come anymore. They don't do the princess dance anymore, which is a shame, but you do get to meet some extra princesses. So as I've said, we've been three times and I'm just gonna give you a run through of the different princesses we've seen to give you an idea, because it is pure luck. They're not planned, you can't find this out online, it's just luck of the draw, really. So on our first trip, we of course met those three, but then we also met Belle, haven't seen Belle since, Aurora, and on that visit we saw Prince Charming as well, who was charming. And then on our second visit we saw Tiana, who we love, so we were really pleased to meet her, and Snow White, and also we saw Princess Minnie that evening. We had Minnie Mouse in her pointy princess hat, which was super lovely. And then on our recent visit, we also met Aurora, Ariel, and Rapunzel. <laughs> we finally met Rapunzel. Um, and as I mentioned, we had amazing interaction with all of the princesses we met on each of our trips. So definitely good fun. With regards to the food, it's a beautiful menu to choose from, in, in my opinion. I really enjoy the different options on there. As I've mentioned, it is quite grown up kind of food. So if you've got children who really enjoy kind of um, food like chicken nuggets, that kind of stuff, and who doesn't? I love chicken nuggets too. Um, then they might not be so keen, but I mean, we've been lucky so far, so you never know. What I would say is they give you like, um, a, a, I think it's a prince's cocktail or something, which is like a, a juice. And then you also get little sort of uh, fairy puffs, I think they're called. And actually like lit little savory profiteroles with melted cheese on top. Um, and you also have a bread basket. So if for any reason, you're little ones aren't keen on the food that's there there is still stuff that they can eat that will fill them up and from memory as well if you have things like the pasta they do serve the pasta separately from the sauce so if people don't like having the sauce all over it they can add the bits they want which is kind of nice now with this like inventions you can book and pay ahead as well um, we use the dining plan uh, we used our premium vouchers and we could choose between um, the kind of standard menu as, I, as it were. When I say standard, it's still amazing, but it's the menu that's available all the time there. Or um, we could choose from the 25th anniversary menu, which I'm guessing they'll start to wrap up around the end of September when the 25th anniversary celebrations come to a close. Um, it was really, really nice. Um, I had for my starter scallops love scallops and then I had a beautiful steak absolutely delicious and then for my pudding I had a chocolate mousse cake which is blue don't be put off by the color it's very yummy um, and it's complete with a Cinderella shoe as well which is really really pretty so here's a little bit of video of the inside of the restaurant and also the pictures of the food
So there you go, that's our meal at Le Berge de Sandrion. We would like to eat there again. It's a lovely, lovely experience and I can't quite imagine going to Disneyland Paris without making the most of sort of sitting down and meeting all these different princesses in a really chilled environment with such lovely decor. From the iconic Cinderella coach outside to all the amazing paintings inside, it really is a special occasion. And you also get a menu which the children can colour in the back or you can colour in if you want to, doesn't matter. Um, and you can then use as an autograph book as well, which is really, really good. So the next meal I'm going to talk about is our character breakfast at Plaza Gardens. Now Plaza Gardens, if you're not sure, is right at the bottom of Main Street. If you are heading down Main Street with our beautiful castle in front of you, then if you take a right, it is on the corner, you'll be able to see it and you have views of the castle from some of the windows anyway at this restaurant. Now at different times of the day it offers kind of buffet dining and I've heard that it's a really really good restaurant <coughs> if you do like, excuse me, sort of buffet type meals but at breakfast time they now do character um, dining and they have done for a while now because this is the second time we've done it and there's two different seatings. We tend to go for the later sitting which is at 9.45am because that means that we can hit the parks nice and early, make the most of extra magic time and then go and sit down in Plaza Gardens, eat all the pancakes, drink all the coffee and and meet all the characters. Now just to give you an idea of the characters you're likely to meet at Plaza Gardens, this might change slightly but the couple of times we've been and from what I've heard it does tend to be this set crew. You will get Mickey, Tigger, Piglet, Scrooge, Daisy and sometimes Eeyore. We didn't get Eeyore this time, we did not get him but we had seen him the time before so it wasn't quite so bad. Um, now with this one you can um, either pay for the breakfast entirely um, or you can use your hotel dining vouchers towards it whichever level you're at. Um, so for example because we were on premium we were able to um, not have breakfast at the hotel that morning but instead use the vouchers there which was really nice. Um, it's a good variety of brunch style food. I took a bit of footage of it. I hope it isn't too rushed because I was quite hungry. <laughs> there's a theme here, I'm always hungry. Um, but yeah, there's a good selection. So you can go for kind of continental breakfast, cooked breakfast, sort of um, cold meats, cheeses, different types of bread, smoked salmon, yum. Um, and then of course you've got like a tea and coffee machine, all that kind of stuff. There's juice, cereal, pastries, there's plenty absolutely plenty, nothing runs out, there's plenty of food for everybody. Um, what I would say is that it's really really good fun but it's a slightly different level of interaction from somewhere like Inventions or Le Berge de Sandrion or maybe even Cafe Mickey because um, you know the characters are sort of dashing around, they're quite busy so you will sort of um, get a quick hug, maybe an autograph and a photo but you won't have that extended interaction so if that's what you're after then you would be better off going for something like Inventions if you can, if your budget can stretch to it. Um, but this is a nice sort of cheerful, fun, fast way to meet lots and lots of characters Characters and fill up that autograph book. So here you go, here is the video of all the different foods you can have and my two plates of food, I was hungry, and here they are now. There we go, that is the character breakfast at Plaza Gardens. As I've said, good fun, nice food, a great way to meet characters, especially if you really want to meet as many characters as possible because there's definitely a good few there. Would we do it again? We probably wouldn't, I'd say. Not because we didn't like it, we really liked it. It's just purely, we would kind of rather have like a, a normal like hotel breakfast, I guess, or pick something up in the park and then save that character dining for when you can spend a little bit more time with them because it can feel a little bit rushed. Not in a bad way, but you do have to have everything ready to sort of hit the ground running with the characters so that they can have their couple of minutes with you and then move on. But it's definitely good fun. So then here we are, we're up to our last reservation 
for this trip and it was Bistro Chez Remy. Now um, for this one we actually went for a lunchtime sitting which kind of threw all our plans about brunch up in the air a little bit but purely because their latest sitting was at something like six o'clock I think um, due, due to the time of year we went <coughs> excuse me and we wanted to really sort of go back and maybe have the afternoon tea at that point instead and then go back into the park anyway logistics so where it is it is in studios and it is right down at Plaster's Plaster Remy I believe it's called next to the Ratatouille ride and this is Bistro Chez Remy Again, this is one of those ones you're going to want to book if you fancy eating there, because it is very popular. Now, deep breath, the theming. The theming here is amazing. You are absolutely shrunk down to the size of a rat. Everything is oversized, you know, tables are separated by giant great big plates and knives and forks. If you sit down on a smaller table, you're underneath a cocktail umbrella with your table as a jam jar lid sitting on, um, you know, the sort of um, champagne corks instead of stools. It's just the theming is amazing. I love it. Even if you look up, the lighting is actually giant fairy lights with kind of ivy and flowers. So you really do feel diddy. It's fantastic. Um, and the food itself is wonderful as well. We tend to have the same thing when we go because we love it. Um, so I had, um, I believe the chef salad, which is really, really nice. And then it had the steak and the most amazing Brie Dauphinoise potatoes. I can't even. If you like kind of cheesy potatoes, if you like Brie, you have to order this because it is just amazing. I've tried recreating it at home, can't recreate it at home. Although I think there is like a Ratatouille cookbook, so maybe I need to get myself that and do some practicing. Um, and then for pudding, oh, don't forget the Ratatouille. I also had ratatouille, which you'll see in the pictures is served in a really beautiful way and it's quite, um, yeah, it definitely evokes the scene in the film, the way it's served, it's really, really clever. And then for my dessert, I had an amazing apple tart tatin, which is beautiful. It was just like the apples were perfectly caramelized with this buttery flavor. And then I think it was served with like creme fraiche, which was nice. I would have preferred ice cream because I'm an ice cream girl. But yeah, it was really, really yummy. So um, just to give you an idea of what we did with regards to dining plans and things, again, we used our premium dining vouchers here, although um, you can of course pay as you can with any of the restaurants. And if you are on a different kind of um, plan, whether you're on standard plus premium, what have you, you can then top up if you need to. Now the beauty of using the premium voucher here was that we could pick and choose from the menu because for example foie gras was on the premium menu, I don't want to eat foie gras so I was able to choose something else from the menu from another kind of level which I thought was really good to have that flexibility and I imagine if you kind of talk to the waiter if there's something you don't eat you'd be able to do the same and it'd be just fine. Um, so yeah, what I'm going to do now is put some footage in of the actual restaurant itself and then photos of what we ate at Bistro Chez Remy. So here you go. So there you go, there's our photos from our dining experience at Bistro Chez Remy. It was absolutely delicious and I'm sure we'll be returning there soon because we really, really love the theming, we really love the decor, but most importantly, we really love the food. We've been really lucky there, we've enjoyed everything we've had and it always makes for a really special experience for us as well. And it's so nice to be able to kind of jump on the ride, as I've said with Pirates, and then go and 
go straight into your dining reservation and really make the most of that special experience. So there we go, we're coming to the end of our Disney dining diary. That is the end for us, I'm afraid. But as you can see, we ate very, very well. We had lots of lovely dining experiences. We were very lucky with the characters we met. We really enjoyed the food. And we also made the most of our hotel breakfasts, of our afternoon teas, and of course, let's not forget the snack pack. That would be my top tip if you are open to the idea of snack packs because they're a great way not only to save some money to spend on merch, <laughs> but also a good way to kind of make the most of those times of the day where you're just pausing or you're walking somewhere else because if you're just keeping that blood sugar up and keeping those grumbly rumbly tumblies at bay by having maybe an apple a packet of raisins some sort of cereal bar or something it then helps you to enjoy the rest of your day before you get to the point where you just need to sit down and eat because you're so sort of hangry <laughs> so yeah to avoid hangry i would definitely suggest snack packs because they're a really good way to kind of pad out your dining plans for that day so another thing, that was my tummy rumbling in fact, did you hear that, I used that back, sorry. Another thing that I have of course discovered is my obsession with peach iced tea. I don't know about you guys, if you've been to Disneyland Paris recently, or if you've tried peach iced tea, what do you think of it? Are you as obsessed as I am with it? Luckily we can now buy it in stores in the UK. I'm not sure how healthy it is, probably quite a lot of caffeine, but we do need the caffeine and pixie dust, so I don't mind. So anyway, what I'd love to hear now is if you've got any memorable dining experiences at Disneyland Paris. If so, please do drop them in the comments below. And also, if you've got any firm favourites that you always return to time and time again for your Disneyland Paris dining, please do let us know all about them and let us know why, what makes them so special and what makes them your definite favourite at Disneyland Paris. So I hope this little dining video has been useful to you guys. Um, if so, please do leave me a sparkly donutty thumbs up and share, comment, subscribe, all those wonderful things, and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.